the fifth. Dormant say, Le Chevalier Augustin, Eugénie, Madame de Saint-Ange, Madame de Saint-Ange, presenting Augustin. Behold the man I mentioned! Let's on with it, friends! Let's to our frolics! What would life be without its little amusements? Come hither, simpleton! Oh, the ninny! Would you believe it? I have been six months struggling to turn this great pig into something fit for civilized society, and I've got nowhere with him. Augustine. Oi, ma'am, you speak sometimes like that, that I'm beginning not to get on so bad right now. And when there's a piece of ground lying fallow, you always give it to me to till. I'm the one that gets it. The one say. <laughs> oh, precious, charming, the dear boy, he's as frank as he is fresh, exhibits Eugene. Augustine, look sharp, my lad, there's a bed of flowers lying fallow, would you like to try your spade on it? Oh, Jemmy, sir! Such neat little oddments aren't made for such as me. <laughs> to it, mademoiselle. Eugenie, blushing. Heavens, I'm so ashamed. Rid yourself of that weak-hearted sentiment. All actions, and above all those of libertinage, being inspired in us by nature. There is not one... Of whatever kind that warrants shame. Be smart there, Eugenie. Act the whore with this young man. Consider that every provocation sensed by a boy and originating from a girl is a natural offertory. And that your sex never serves nature better than when it prostitutes itself to ours. That, tis in a word, to be fucked that you are born, and that she who refuses her obedience to this intention nature has for her does not deserve to see the light longer. You, yourself, lower the young man's trousers to below his handsome thighs, roll up his shirt under his vest, so that his fore end and his after which, by the by, is damn fine, are at your disposal. Now, let one of your hands catch up that lank length of flesh, pendant now, but which, I wager, will soon amaze you with its new form, and with your other hand explore his buttocks, and thus tickle his rectal Dap! Yes! In this manner! To show Eugenie how it is to be done, he Socratizes Augustine himself. <laughs> Uncap this Rubicon bead! Never! While you pollute it, never allow it to be covered over. Keep it naked! Stretch the skin! Yeah, stretch it taut! Now there! Dost see what effect my lesson has had already? And you, my boy, I beseech you, don't stand there holding your hands behind your back. Isn't there something you might put them to? Let them stray about upon this superb breast over these wondrous buttocks. Mm. Oh, it's, uh... Couldn't I give this miss a smack or two? It would make me right happy. We'll kiss here, imbecile. Kiss her as much as you like. Do you not kiss me when I'm in bed with you? Oh, jeez. Pretty little mouth. All fresh and nice tasting. Seems like I've got my nose in the roses in our garden. Augustine shows his rising prick. Mm, oh, look, sir, that's what it does. Do you see it? 
Good heaven! How it enlarges! Attempt now to put rather more regularity in your motions. Let them be more energetic. Here, yield me your place for an instant, and watch closely what I do. <laughs> Frigg's Augustine. <laughs> do you observe? These movements are more purposeful, and at the same time softer. There, begin again, and above all, keep the head bare. Good. There it is in its full vigor. Now let's ascertain whether it's bigger than the Chevaliers. Oh, be certain of it. You see very well, I cannot get my hand around it. Hmm. Yes, right you are. Fourteen long, eight and a half round. I've never seen a larger. Tis what is called a superb prick. And you, madame, you say you employ it? Regularly. Every night I spend here in the country. But not, I hope, in the ass. Mm, rather more often there than in the cunt. <laughs> oh, my God, what libertinage! Upon my honor, I don't know whether I could manage it. <laughs> oh, don't pinch, Domance, and he'll penetrate your ass as neatly as he does mine. <laughs> we shall see. I flatter myself in the belief our Augustine will do me the honor of casting a little fuck into my behind. I'll repay him in the same coin, but let's continue. We have lessons to give. Look sharp, Eugenie. Mind, the serpent is about to disgorge its venom. Prepare yourself. Fix your gaze upon the head of this sublime weapon. And when, as a sign of its approaching spasm, you see it inflate, take on a deeper, more purple hue. Let your activities then become frenzied. Let your fingers, now tickling his anus, dig as deep as possible before the event occurs. Give yourself entirely to the libertine who is amusing himself with you. See out his mouth in order to suck it. Let your charms fly, so to speak, to do your hand's bidding. He discharges, Eugenie. "'Tis the moment of your triumph! "'Oi! Oi! Miss! It's killing me! "'Oh! Oh! 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 oh, oh. oh I can't do no more! Ooh, oh, oh, more! Go on and do me more! Harder! Miss! Please! Miss! "'Oh! Oh, God Almighty! Oh, oh, I can't see straight! "'Oh! Redouble your efforts, Eugenie! Triple them!' Caution to the winds! He's drunk and in his throes! God, what an abundance of sperm! With what power it springs forth! Behold the traces of the initial jet! It shot ten feet! Nay, more! By God's fuck! The room's awash. Never have I seen a comparable discharge. And you tell me, madame, this article fucked you last night? Nine or ten times, I believe. We gave up counting long ago. <laughs> Le Chevalier. Lovely, Eugenie! You're covered with it! Oh, wouldst I were drowned in it? Tell me, my dear master, are you content? Mightily, for the beginning, but there remain several episodes you have neglected. Wait, wait! They can mean nothing to her lest they are the fruit of experience. For my part, I confess I am exceedingly pleased with my Eugenie. The happiest dispositions are apparent in her.
And I believe that we ought now to have her enjoy another spectacle. Let's have her witness the effects of a prick in the ass. Domance, I'm going to offer you mine. I shall be in my brother's arms. He will incunt me. I'll be buggered by you. And you, Genie, will prepare your prick. We'll insert it in my ass. We'll supervise all the movements. We'll study them. And this, in order to familiarize herself with this operation, to which, afterward, she will submit. It will then be a question of this Hercules fair prick. I am passing eager to see this pretty little behind rent by brave Augustine's violent blows. But I agree to what you propose, madame, provided we add one detail. Augustine, whom I'll have stiff again with two strokes of my wrist, will bugger me while I sodomize you. I heartily approve the arrangement. I too gain thereby, and my scholar will benefit from two excellent lessons instead of one. Domance seizes Augustine. Come, my stalwart swain, I'll restore thee to life. Eh? Look how the brute responds. Kiss me, dear friend. You are still all wetted over with fuck, and tis fuck I ask of thee. Ah, oh, by God, I simply must pump his ass while frigging him. Approach, sister, to comply with the Monsey structures and with yours. I'm going to stretch out on this bed. You will lie in my arms and expose your gorgeous buttocks to him. And very wide indeed you shall spread them. Yes, Chassu, we are ready to begin. No, no, not quite. Wait for me. I must first of all enter your sister's ass, since Augustine whispers me to do it. Next, I'll marry you. Remember, let's not fall short of any of our principles, and remember also that a student is observing us, and we owe her precise demonstrations. Eugenie, come frig me while I determine this low fellow's enormous engine. Lend a hand with my own erection. Pollute my prick very lightly. Roll it upon your buttocks. She does so. Is this as it ought to be? <sighs> there is always too much of the timorous in your movements. Far more tightly squeeze the prick, you frig, Eugenie. If masturbation is agreeable at all, it is because the member is more severely compressed than, than in fucking. It is therefore necessary that the cooperating hand become, for the engine over which it works, an infinitely straighter passage than exists anywhere else in the body. Better! Yes, that's better. Yes, yes. Spread your behind yet a little more, so that with each stroke the end of my prick can glide ahead to touch your asshole. Yes, very good. Very good indeed. While waiting, Chevalier, frig your sister. We will be at your disposal in a minute. Ah, excellent. There's my man stiffening. Now ready yourself, madame. Open that sublime ass to my impure ardor. Eugenie, guide the dart. It must be your hand that conducts it to the vent. Your hand must make it penetrate. Immediately it is in. Get a good grip on it. Oh, Augustine, here, and fill my entrails up with him. Those are an apprentice's chores, and thence there is much instruction to be had. That... My dear, is why I put you to this trouble. Are my buttocks where you wish them, Domance? Ah, my angel, if you but knew how much I desire you, how long I have been waiting to be buggered by a sodomite! Thy will shall be done, 
madame, but suffer me to halt an instant at my idol's feet. I would praise that before entering into the depths of the sanctuary. <sighs> what a divine ass it is! <sighs> Let me kiss it! Let me lick it! Lick it! A thousand times over, and a thousand more! <sighs> Oh, yeah, that's the prick you yearn for. Dust, feel it, bitch. Tell me, say, dust, feel it, penetrate. <sighs> oh, drive into darkness in my bowels. Oh, sweet lechery, what is your empire? Tis an ass such as never in my days have I fucked. Worthy of Ganymede himself! To it, Eugenie, be immediately attended upon my buggering by Augustine. I bring him to you. There! To Augustine. Wake, sweet angel. Do you spy the hole you've to pierce? I, I see it. Mother of God! There's a big one, I say. I'll go easier in than you, uh, than into you, miss. Oh, kiss me a little so we'll enter nice. <laughs> Eugenie embraces him. Oh, as much as you like. You are so fresh. But push. Do you hear? The head's out of sight. Twas quick, and I dare say the rest will follow close behind. Thrust, thrust, my good fellow. Tear me, if so it must be. Dost see my ass? Is it not ready? Doth it not beckon? Well, drive. Ah, oh, my Christ! What a bludgeon! Never have I received one of such amplitude. Eugenie, how many inches remain outside? Scarcely two. Then I have eleven in my ass. <laughs> what ecstasy! <laughs> it cleaves me in twain. I can no more. Chevalier, are you ready? Fear, and give me your opinion. Come hither, my children. Let me wed thee. Let me do all I may to expedite this heavenly incest. He introduces the Chevalier's prick into his sister's cunt. Why, my dears, there I am fucked from either side. By Jesus! What a divine pleasure! No, there's none like it in all the world. Ah, oh, fuck! How I pity the woman who has not tasted it. Rattle me, Domon, say. Smite away! Let the violence of your movements impale me upon my brother's blade! And you, Eugenie, do you contemplate me? Come, regard me in vice! Come, learn from my example! To savor it! To be transported! To taste it with delectation! Oh, behold, my love, behold all that I simultaneously do. Scandal, seduction, bad example, incest, adultery, sodomy. Oh, Satan, one and unique God of my soul. Inspire thou in me something yet more. Present further perversions to my smoking heart. And then shalt thou see how I shall plunge myself into them all. Ah, voluptuous creature! How you do stir up my fuck! How your sentiments in the uncommon temperature of your ass do excite it up to discharge. Twill or have me coming in an instant. Eugenie, fire my fucker's courage. Belabor his flanks. Pry apart his buttocks. You are now somewhat skilled in the art of reviving the desires in him who vacillates. Your approach alone gives energy to the prick that fucks me. Hmm, I feel it. 
the strokes are more powerful. Oh, thou bitch. I must yield to you what I should never have wanted but to owe to my own ass end. Wait for me. Wait. Dust here? Oh, my friends, let us not discharge, but in unison, tis life's single pleasure. Fuck! Fuck! Come when you wish, for I can withstand it no longer. Oh, double name of God be fucked! Sacred bugger God! I come! Inundate me, my friends! Soak! Drench! Drown your whore! Spray floods of your scum fuck to the very seat of this blazing soul! It exists for naught but to be slaked, quenched by your tides! I, 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 fuck, fuck! What incredible excess of voluptuousness! Ah! I am slain! Eugenie! Eugenie! Let me kiss thee, let me eat thee, let me consume, batten upon thy fuck as I lose my own! Augustine Dormance and the Chevalier act in chorus. The fear of appearing monotonous prevents us from recording expressions which, upon such occasions, are all very apt to resemble one another. And there is one of the fairest fucks I have ever had. Shows Augustine to the others. This bugger glutted me with sperm. But, madame, I consider I pass this much on to you. Oh, speak not to me of it. I am sunk in it. I cannot say as much. Not I. No. Oh. She casts herself playfully into her friend's arm. You say you have committed abundant sins, my dearest. But as for me, blessed soul, not a one. Oh, if I have got to eat my soup cold this way, I'll have indigestion. <laughs> How droll this creature is! <laughs> but how charming! Come here, little one. I'd whip thee a bit. He strikes her ass. Kiss me. Your turn is soon to come. From now on, we must occupy ourselves exclusively with her. Consider her, brother. She's the prey. Examine that charming maidenhood. Twill soon belong to thee. Oh, no, not by the forehand. Twould hurt me overmuch. From behind, as much as you please. As Domance dealt with me a short while ago. <laughs> Naive and delicious girl, she demands of you precisely what one has so much difficulty obtaining from others. Oh, tis not without a little remorse, for you have not entirely reassured me upon the criminal enormity I have always heard ascribed to this, especially when it is done between man and man, as has just occurred with Domance and Augustine. Tell me, monsieur. Tell me how your philosophy explains this species of misdemeanor. Tis frightful, is it not? Start from one fundamental point, Eugenie. In libertinage, nothing is frightful. Because everything libertinage suggests is also a natural inspiration. The most extraordinary, the most bizarre acts those which most errantly seem to conflict with every law, every human institution. As for heaven, I have nothing to say. Well, Eugenie, even those are not frightful, and there is not war amongst them all that cannot be demonstrated within the boundaries of nature. It is certain that the one you allude to, lovely Eugenie, is the very same relative to which one finds such a strange fable in the tasteless fictions of the Holy Writ, that tedious compilation of an untutored Jew during a Babylonian captivity. But the anecdote is false. Once, all likelihood, or verisimilitude, when it is affirmed that in retribution for these depravities, the cities, those towns rather, perished by fire, having their sight upon the craters of ancient volcanoes, Sodom, 
Gamora! Two perished like the Italian cities Vesuvius' lava submerged. And that's all there is to the miracle. Yet all the same. T'was from this most simple event they departed in order barbarously to invent the torture of fire to be used against those unfortunate humans who, in one area out of Europe, delivered themselves over to this natural fancy. Oh, tis natural? Yes, natural, so I affirm it to be. Nature has not got two voices. You know, one of them condemning all day what the other commands, and it is very certain that it is nowhere but from her organ that those men who are infatuated with this mania receive the impressions that drive them to it. They who wish to denigrate the taste or proscribe its practice declare it is harmful to population. How dull-witted they are! Those imbeciles who think of nothing but the multiplication of their kind, and who detect nothing but the crime in anything that conduces to a different end. Is it really so firmly established that nature has so great a need for this overcrowding as they would like us to have us believe? It is very certain that one is guilty of an outrage whenever one abstains from this stupid propagation. To convince ourselves, let us for an instant scrutinize both her operations and her laws. Were it that nature did not but create and never destroy, I might be able to believe, with those tedious sophists, that the sublimest of all actions would be incessantly to labour at production, and following that, I should grant, with them, that the refusal to reproduce would be, would perforce have to be, a crime. However, does not the most fleeting glance at natural operations reveal that destructions are just as necessary to her plan? as are creations, that the one and the other of these functions are interconnected and enmeshed so intimately that for either to operate without the other would be impossible, that nothing would be born, nothing would be regenerated without destructions. Destruction. Hence, like creation, is one of nature's mandates. This principle acknowledged, how may I offend nature by refusing to create? The which, supposing there to be some evil in it, would appear infinitely less evil, no doubt about it, than the act of destruction, which latter is numbered among her laws as I have but a moment ago proven. If on the one hand I admit the penchant nature has given me to fabricate these losses and ruins, I must examine, on the other hand, to see whether they are not necessary to her, and whether I do not conform with her will when I destroy. Thus considered, where then, I ask you, is the crime? But... The fools and the populators continue to object. And they are not but one. This procreative sperm cannot have been placed in your loins for any purpose other than reproduction. To misuse it is an offense. I have just proven the contrary. Since this misuse would not even be equivalent to destruction, and since destruction far more serious than misuse, would not itself be criminal. Secondly, it is false that nature intends this spermatic liquid to be employed only and entirely for reproduction. Were this true, she would not permit its spillage under any circumstances save those appropriate to that end. But experience shows that the contrary may happen since we lose it both when and where we wish. Secondly, she would forbid the occurrence of those losses save in coitus, losses which, however, do take place, both when we dream and when we summon remembrances. 
were nature miserly about this so precious sap. "'Twould never but be into the vessel of reproduction she would tolerate its flow. "'Assuredly she would not wish this voluptuousness, "'wherewith at such moments she crowns us, "'to be felt by us when we divert our tribute. "'For it would not be reasonable to suppose "'she could consent to give us pleasures "'at the very moment we heaped insults upon her. "'Let us go further. "'Were women not born save to produce?' which most surely would be the case with this production so dear to nature. Would it happen that, throughout the whole length of a woman's life, there are no more than seven years, all the arithmetic performed, during which she is in a state capable of conceiving and giving birth? What? <laughs> nature avidly seeks propagation, does she? And everything which does not tend to this end offends her, does it? And out of a hundred years of life, the sex destined to produce cannot do so during more than seven years. Nature wishes for propagation only, and the semen she accords man to serve in these reproducings is lost, wasted, misused. Whenever, wherever, and as often as it pleases man! He takes the same pleasures in this loss as in the useful employment of his seed, and never the least inconvenience. Hmm. Let us cease, dear friends, let us cease to believe in such absurdities. They cause good sense to shudder. Ah, far from outraging nature, on the contrary, and let us be well persuaded of it, the sodomite and lesbian serve her stubbornly, abstaining from a conjunction whose result in progenitor can be nothing but irksome to her. Let us make no mistake about it. This propagation was never one of her laws, nothing she ever demanded of us, but at the very most something she tolerated. I have told you so. Why? What difference would it make to her were the race of men entirely to be extinguished upon earth, annihilated? She laughs at our pride when we persuade ourselves all would be over and done with were this misfortune to occur. Why? She would simply fail to notice it. Do you fancy races have not already become extinct? Oh! Count several of them perished, and nature, struck dumb by so precious a loss, doesn't so much as murmur. The entire species might be wiped out and the air would not be the less pure for it, or the star less brilliant, nor the universe's march less exact. What idiocy it is to think that our kind is so useful to the world that he who might not labor to propagate it or he who might disturb this propagation would necessarily become a criminal. Let's bring this blindness to a stop and may the example of more reasonable people serve to persuade us of our errors. There is not one corner of the earth where the alleged crime of sodomy has not had shrines and votaries. The Greeks, who made of it, so to speak, a virtue, raised a statue unto Venus Calibgea. Rome sent to Athens for law, and returned with this divine taste. And under the emperors, behold the progress it made! Sheltered by the Roman eagle, it spread from one end of the earth to the other, with the empire's collapse. It took refuge near the diadem. It followed the arts in Italy. It is handed down to those of us who govern ourselves aright. We discover a hemisphere. We find sodomy in it. Cook cast anchor in a new world. Sodomy reigns there. Had our balloons reached the moon, it would have been discovered there as well. 
delicious preference, child of nature and of pleasure. Thou must be everywhere men are to be found, and wherever thou shalt be known, there shall they erect altars to thee. Oh, my friends, can there be an extravagance to equal that of imagining that a man must be a monster deserving to lose his life because he has preferred enjoyment of the asshole to that of the cunt? Because a young man with whom he finds two pleasures, that of being at once lover and mistress, has appeared to him preferable to a young girl who promises him but half as much. He shall be a villain, a monster, for having wished to play the role of a sex not his own. Indeed. Why, then, has nature created him susceptible of this pleasure? Let us inspect his conformation. You will know... Let us inspect his conformation. You will observe radical differences between it and that of other men who have not been blessed with his predilection for the behind. His buttocks will be fairer, plumper, never a hair will shade the altar of pleasure, whose interior, lined with a more delicate, more sensual, more sensitive membrane, will be found positively of the same variety as the interior of a woman's vagina. This man's character, once again unlike that of others, will be softer, more pliant, subtler. In him you will find almost all the vices and all the virtues native to women. You will recognize even their weaknesses there. All will have feminine manias, and sometimes feminine habits and traits. Would it then be possible that nature, having thus wise assimilated them into women, could be irritated by what they have of women's tastes? Is it not evident that this is a category of men different from the other? A class nature has created in order to diminish or minimize propagation, whose overgreat extent would infallibly be prejudicial to her. Ah, dear Eugenie, did you but know how delicate is one's enjoyment when one a heavy prick fills a behind, when, driven to the balls, it flutters there, palpitating, and then, withdrawn to the foreskin, it hesitates and returns, plunges in again up to the hair. No, no. In the wide world there is no pleasure to rival this one. Tis the delight of philosophers, that of heroes. It would be that of the gods were not the pots used in its heavenly conjugation the only gods we on earth should reverence. Oh, 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 my friends, let me be buggered. Here, my buttocks stand ready. I present them to you. Fuck me, for I discharge. Upon pronouncing these words, she falls into the arms of Madame de Saint-Ange, who clasps her, embraces her, and offers the young lady's elevated flanks to Domancey. Divine teacher, will you resist this proposal? Will you not be tempted by this sublime ass? Hmm. See how it doth yawn, how it winks at thee. I ask your forgiveness, beautiful Eugenie. It shall not be I, if indeed you wish it, who shall undertake to extinguish the fires I have lit. Dear child. In my eyes you possess the large fault of being a woman. I was so considerate it as to forget much in order to harvest your virginity. Deign to think well of me for going no further. The Chevalier is going to take the task in hand. His sister, equipped with this artificial prick, will bestow the most redoubtable buffets upon her brother's ass all the while presenting her noble behind to Augustine, who shall bugger her, and whom I'll fuck meantime. For I make no attempt to conceal it. This fine lad's ass has been signaling to me for an hour, and I wish absolutely to repay him for what he has done to me. 
I accept the revision. But in truth, Domase, the frankness of your avowal little offsets its impoliteness. A thousand pardons, mademoiselle. But we other buggers are very nice on the question of candor and the exactitude of our principles. However, a reputation for candor is not the one we commonly grant those whom, like yourself, are accustomed only to taking people from behind. <laughs> we do have something of the treacherous, yes. A touch of the false, you may believe it. But after all, madame, I have demonstrated to you that this character is indispensable to man and society. Condemned to live amidst people who have the greatest interest in hiding themselves from our gaze, in disguising the vices they have in order to exhibit nothing but virtues they should never respect, there should be the greatest danger in the thing were we to show them frankness only. For then, tis evident, we would give them all the advantages over us, they on their part refuse us and the dupery would be manifest. The needs for dissimulation and hypocrisy are bequeathed us by society. Let us yield to the fact. Allow me for an instant to offer my own example to you, madame. There is surely no being more corrupt anywhere in the world. Well, my contemporaries are deceived in me. Ask them what they think of Dormance, and they all will tell you I am an honest man. Whereas there is not a single crime whereof I have not gleaned the most exquisite delights. Oh, you do not convince me that you have committed atrocities. Atrocities? Indeed, madame. I have wrought horrors. Fie! You are like the man who said to his confessor, Needless to go into details, sir. Murder and theft accepted. You can be sure I've done everything. Yes, madame, I should say the same thing, omitting those exceptions. What? Libertine, you have permitted yourself everything, madame. Everything. With a temperament... And principles like mine, does one deny oneself anything? Oh, let's fuck! Let's fuck! Oh, I can bear such language no longer! We'll return to it! But save your confessions for later, Domance. I hear them best your auditors should be clear-headed. And when you have an erection, all the sincerity deserts what you say. Uh, you fall into uttering horrors, and from you we get, in the guise of truth, the libertine glitterings of an inflamed imagination. They take their places. One moment, Chevalier, one moment. I'm the one who shall introduce it, but by way of preliminary. And I ask the lovely Eugenie's pardon for it. She must allow me to flog her, in order she be put in the proper humour. He beats her. Ah! Ah! I, I assure you, this ceremony has no purpose. Ah! Admit, Domance, that it satisfies your lewdness. But in doing, it don't take on airs. I beg of you, ah! I beg of you, and suppose you were doing it anything on my behalf. Domance whips away merrily. <laughs> have news for me in a moment. Yeah, you have yet no acquaintances with this preliminary's influences. Oh! Come, come, little bitch! You'll be last! Ah! Ah! My God! How oh! he does wax hot! Ah! My buttocks, too! They are all fire! But indeed, you are hurting me! Oh, I'll avenge you, dear heart. I'll retaliate in kind. She takes up a whip and flogs the Monse. Ah! With all my heart, ah! I ask but one favor of Eugenie, that she consent to be flogged as vigorously as I myself desire to be. Ah! You notice how well within natural law I am. But wait, let's arrange it. 
Let Eugenie mount your flanks, madame. She will clutch your neck, like those children whose mothers carry them on their backs. That way I'll have two asses under my hand, and I'll drub them together. The Chevalier and Augustine both will work upon me, striking my buttocks. Yes, tis thus. Well, there we are. What ecstasy! <laughs> Do not spare this little rascal, I beseech you, and as I ask no quarter, I want you to grant it to no one. I believe my blood is flowing. Uh, uh, uh. Twill embellish our buttocks by lending color to them. Hmm. <laughs> courage, my angel, courage. Bear in mind that it is always by way of pain one arrives at pleasure. Ah! I can do no more. Ah! Dombance holds him in to contemplate his work. Then, starting in again, another fifty, Eugenie. Yes, precisely fifty more on either cheek will do it. Oh, bitches! How great shall now be your pleasure in fucking? The posture is dissolved. Madame de Saint-Ange examines Eugenie's, Eugenie's buttocks. Oh, the poor little thing! Her behind is all bloodied over. Beast! How much pleasure you take thus in kissing cruelty's vestiges! Domance pollutes himself. <sighs> <sighs> yes, I mask nothing, and my pleasures would be more ardent were the wounds more cruel. But you are a monster! Indeed I am. There's good face in him at least! Off with you, Chevalier. Sodomize her. Hold her body, and in three shakes twill be done. Oh, heavens! Yours is thicker than Domance's. Chevalier, you are tearing me apart. Oh, go softly, I beg of you. Impossible, my angel. I must reach my objective. Consider, mm, I'm performing before my master's eyes, both his prestige and man I stick. Tis there, uh, I prodigiously love to see a prick's pubic hair rub the border of an anus. Come now, madame, embugger your brother. Here we have Augustine's prick. An inadmirable way to be introduced into you, and I promise you, I'll spare your fucker nothing. Indeed, excellent. It seems to me we've got our rosary well strung together. Not another thought now, but of discharging. Cast an eye on this little tramp. How she quivers and wriggles. Is it my fault? I am dying from pleasure oh, and whipping oh, this immense prick. Oh, oh, amiable Chevalier who frings me the while. Oh, my darling, oh, I, my darling, I can do no more. Jesus, nor can I discharge. A little unity, my friends. Grant me another two more minutes to overtake you, and we shall all of us come together. There's no time left. My fuck runs into lovely Eugene's ass. Oh, I am dying. Oh, sacred name of the fucking almighty. Oh, what pleasure. I follow you, friends. Oh, I follow hard after you. I, too, am blinded by fuck. Oh, me too. Oh, on me. 
<laughs> what a scene! This bugger has filled up my ass! To the bidet! Ladies, to the bidet! <laughs> no, indeed no. I like that. I do. I like the feeling of fucking my ass and keep it in me as long as I can. Uh, no more. <laughs> oh, no more. Enough. Oh, my friends, tell me now if a woman must always accept the proposal when tis made to her, thus to be fucked. Always, dear heart, unfailingly. More. As this mode of fucking is delightful, she ought to require it of those of whom she makes use. But if she's dependent upon the person with whom she amuses herself, if she hopes to obtain favors from him, gifts, or thanks, let her restrain her eagerness and not surrender her ass for nothing. Seated after being urged, besought, wheedled, there is not a man of all those who possess the taste who would not ruin himself for a woman clever enough to refuse him nothing save with the design of inflaming him further. She will extract from him all she wants, if she will has the art of yielding only when pressed. Well, little angel, are you converted? Have you given over believing sodomy a crime? And where it one? What care I? Have you not demonstrated the non-existence of crime? There are now very few actions which appear criminal in my view. There is crime in nothing, dear girl, regardless of what it be. The most monstrous of deeds has, does it not, an auspicious aspect? Who's to gainsay it? Well, as of this moment, it loses every aspect of crime, for in order that what serves one by harming another be a crime, one should first have to demonstrate that the injured person is more important, more precious to nature, than the person who performed the injury and serves her. Now, all individuals being of uniform importance in her eyes, tis impossible that she have a predilection for some one among them. Hence, the deed that serves one person by causing suffering to another is of perfect indifference to nature. But if the action were harmful to a very great quantity of individuals, and if she rewarded us with only a very small quantity of pleasure, would it not then be a frightful thing to execute it? No more so because there is no possible comparison between what others experience and what we sense. The heaviest dose of agony in others sought, assuredly, to be as not to us, and the faintest quickening of pleasure, registered in us, does touch us. Therefore, we should, at whatever the price, prefer this most minor excitation which enchants us to the immense sum of others' miseries, which cannot affect us. But on the contrary, should it happen that the singularity of our organs, some bizarre feature in our construction, renders agreeable to us the sufferings of our fellows that sometimes occurs, who can doubt, then, that we should incontestably prefer anguish in others, which entertains us, to that anguish's absence, which would represent for us a kind of privation, the source of all our moral errors lies in the ridiculous acknowledgment of that tie of brotherhood the Christians invented in the age of their ill fortune and sore distress, constrained to beg pity from others, twas not unclever to claim that all men are brothers. How is one to refuse aid if this hypothesis be accepted? But its rational acceptance is impossible. Are we not all born, solitary, isolated? I say more. Are we not coming to the world all enemies, 
the one of the other, all in a state of perpetual and reciprocal warfare. Now, I ask whether such would be the situation if they did truly exist, this supposed tie of brotherhood and the virtues it enjoins. Are they really natural? Were they inspired in man by nature's voice, men would be aware of them at birth. From that time onward, pity, good works, generosity, would be native virtues against which twould be impossible to defend oneself, and would render the primitive state of savage man totally contrary to what we observe it to be. Yet, if... As you say, nature caused man to be born alone, all independent of other men. You will at least grant me that his needs, bringing, them, bringing him together with other men, must necessarily have established some ties between them, whence blood relationships, ties of love too, of friendship, of gratitude, you will, I hope, Respect those, at least. No more than the others, I am afraid. But let us analyze them. I should like to. A swift glance, Eugenie, at each one in particular. Would you say, for example, that the need to marry, or to prolong my race, or to arrange my fortune, to ensure my future, must establish indissoluble or sacred ties with the object I ally myself to? Would it not, I ask you, be an absurdity to argue thus? So long as the act of coition lasts, I may, to be sure, continue in need of that object in order to participate in the act. But once it is over, and I am satisfied, what, I wonder, will attach the results of this commerce to me? These latter relationships were the results of the terror of parents who dreaded lest they be abandoned in old age, and the politic attentions they show us when we are in our infancy have no object but to make them deserving of the same consideration when they become old. Let us no longer be the dupes of this rubbish! We owe nothing to our parents, not the least thing, Eugenie. And since it is far less for our sake than for their own they have laboured, we may rightfully test them, even rid ourselves of them if their behaviour annoys us. We ought to love them only if they comport themselves well with us. And then our tenderness toward them ought not to be one degree greater than what we might feel for other friends, because the rights of birth establish nothing are basis to nothing, and, once they have been wisely scrutinized and with deliberation, you will surely find nothing there but reasons to hate those who, exclusively thoughtful of their own pleasure, have often given us nothing but an unhappy and unhealthy existence. You mention, Eugenie, ties of love. May you never know them. Ah, for the happiness I wish you, may such a sentiment never approach your breast. What is love? One can only consider it, so it seems to me, as the effect upon us of a beautiful object's qualities. These effects distract us. They inflame us. Were we to possess this object, all would be well with us. If tis impossible to have it, we are in despair. But what is the foundation of this sentiment? Desire. What are this sentiment's consequences? Madness! Let us confine ourselves to the cause and guarantee ourselves against the effects. The cause is to possess the object. Splendid! Let's strive to succeed! but using our head, not losing our wits. Let's enjoy it when we've got it. Let's console ourselves if we fail. 
A thousand other identical and often much superior objects exist to soothe our regrets and our pride. All men, all women, resemble each other. No love resists the effects of sane reflection. Oh, tis a very great cheat and a dupery, this intoxication which puts us in such a state that we see no more, exist no more, save through this object insanely adored. Is this really to live? Is it not rather voluntarily to deprive oneself of all life's sweetness? Is it not to wish to linger in a burning fever which devours, consumes us, without affording us other than metaphysical joys, which bear such a likeness to the effects of madness? Were we always to love this adorable object, were it certain we should never have to quit it, it would still be an extravagance without doubt, but at least excusable. Does this happen, however? Has one many examples of these deathless liaisons, unions which are never dissolved or repudiated? A few months of doting and dalliance soon restores the object to its proper size and shape, and we blush to think of the incense we have squanderingly burned upon that altar, and often we come to wonder that it ever could have seduced us at all. Oh, voluptuous young women, deliver your bodies unto us as often and as much as you wish. Fuck! Divert yourselves. That's the essential thing. But be quick to fly from love. There is none but physical good in it, said Buffon. And as a good philosopher, he exercised his reason on an understanding of nature. I repeat it, amuse yourselves, but love not at all, nor be any more concerned to make yourselves loved. To exhaust oneself in lamentation, waste in sighs, abase oneself in leerings and oglings, pen be a do, tis not that which you must do. It is to fuck, to multiply and often change your fuckers. It is above all to oppose yourselves resolutely to enslavement by any single one person, because the outcome of constant love binding you to him would be to prevent you from giving yourself to someone else, a cruel selfishness which would soon become fatal to your pleasures. Women are not made for one single man. Tis for men at large, nature created them. Listening only to the sacred voice, let them surrender themselves indifferently to all who want them. Always whores, never mistresses. Eschewing love, worshipping pleasure, it will be roses only they will discover in life's career. It will no longer be but flowers they proffer us. Ask, Eugenie, ask the charming woman who has so kindly consented to undertake your education. Ask her what is to be done with a man after one has enjoyed him. In a lower voice, so as to be, so as not to be heard by Augustine. Ask her if she would lift a finger to save this Augustine, who today is the cause of her delights. Should it fall out that someone wished to steal him from her, she would take another, would think no more on this one, and, soon weary of the new, would herself sacrifice him within two months' time were new pleasures to be born of this manoeuvre. <laughs> oh, let my dear Eugenie be very sure that Dolmancé is describing the impulses of my heart, 
mine, and that of every other woman, as if she were to unfold it to him herself. The final part of my analysis treats the bonds of friendship and those of gratitude. We shall respect the former. Very well. Provided they remain useful to us. Let us keep our friends as long as they serve us. Forget them immediately, we have nothing further from them. Tis never but selfishly one should love people. To love them for themselves is nothing but dupery. Nature never inspires other movements in mankind's soul, other sentiments than those which ought to prove useful in some sort, good for nothing. Nothing is more an egoist than nature. Then let us be egoists ourselves. If we wish to live in harmony with her dictates, as for gratitude, Eugenie, tis doubtless the most feeble of all the bonds. Is it then for ourselves men are obliging to us? Not a bit of it, my dear. Tis through ostentation. For the sake of pride. Is it not humiliating thus to become the toy of others' pride? Is it not yet more so to fall into indebtedness to them? Nothing is more burdensome than a kindness one has received. No middle way, no compromise. You have got to repay it or ready yourself for abuse. Upon proud spirits a good deed sits very heavily. It weighs upon them with such violence that the one feeling they exhale is hatred for their benefactors. What, then, in your opinion, are now the ties which supply the isolation wherein nature creates us? What are they, those which should establish relationships between men? By what title should we love them, those others, cherish them, prefer them to ourselves. By what right should we relieve them? Who says that we must relieve them in misfortune? Where well, now in our souls is that cradle of the pretty and useless virtues of generosity, humanity, charity, all those enumerated in the absurd codes of a few idiotic religious doctrines, doctrines which, preached by impostors or by indigents, were invented to secure them their sustenance and toleration. Why, Eugenie, why do you yet acknowledge something sacred in men? Do you conceive some reasons for not always preferring yourself to them? Uh, what you say? So thrills my heart that my mind can take no exception to it. These precepts are grounded in nature, Eugenie. The proof is that you approve them. Freshly hatched from her womb, how could what you sense be the fruit of corruption? But if all the errors you speak of are in nature, why do our laws oppose them? Those laws, being forged for universal application, are in perpetual conflict with personal interest. Just as personal interest is always in contradiction with the general interest. Good for society. Our laws are very bad for the individuals whereof it is composed. For, if they one time protect the individual, they hinder, trouble, fetter him for three quarters of his life. And so the wise man, the man full of contempt for them, will be wary of them. As he is of reptiles and vipers, which, although they wound or kill, are nevertheless sometimes useful to medicine, he will safeguard himself against the laws that he would against a noxious beast. He will shelter himself behind precautions, behind mysteries, the which, for prudence, is easily done. 
Should the fancy to execute a few crimes inflame your spirit, Eugenie, be very certain you may commit them peacefully in the company of your friend and me. Ah, the fancy is already in my heart. What caprice agitates you, Eugenie? You may report it to us in confidence. <gasps> I want a victim. And of what sex would you desire her to be? Of mine. Well, madame, are you content with your student? Does she make sufficiently rapid progress? A victim, my dearest, a victim. Oh, God, that would cause my life's happiness. And what would you do with her? Everything! Everything! All that could render her the most wretched of creatures. Oh, my dearest, my dearest, have pity on me. I can stand it no longer. By God! What an imagination! Come, Eugenie, you are delicious. Let me bestow a thousand kisses upon you. Mwah! Mwah! <laughs> Look, madame, do you see it? Do you see this libertine discharge mentally, without anyone having touched her? I must absolutely embugger her once again. And afterward, will I have what I request? <laughs> yes, mad creature. Yes, we assure you, you shall. Oh, my friend, there is my ass. Do with it what you will. One moment, while I arrange this pleasure bout in a sufficiently lustful manner. Augustine, lie down on the bed. Eugenie, do you recline in his arms while I sodomize her? I'll frig her clitoris with the head of Augustine's superb prick. And Augustine who must be sparing of his fuck, will take good care not to discharge. The gentle chevalier, who, without saying a word, softly frigs himself while listening to us, will have the kindness to arrange himself upon Eugenie's shoulders, so as to expose his fine buttocks to my kisses. <laughs> I'll frig him again. So shall I have my engine in an ass, and a prick in each hand, to pollute. And you, madame, after having been your master, I want you to become mine. Buckle on the most gigantic of your dildos. Madame de Saint-Ange opens a chest filled with a store of them, and our hero selects the most massive. Splendid! This, according to the label, is fourteen by ten. Fit it about your loins, madame, and spare me not. Hmm, indeed, Domance, you had best reconsider. I will cripple you with this device. Fear not. Push, my angel. Penetrate. I'll not enter your dear Eugenie's ass until your enormous member is well advanced into mine. Oh, and it is. Oh, little Jesus. Oh, you propel me heavenward. Oh, no, pity, my lovely one. Oh, I tell you, I am going to fuck your ass without preparations. Oh, sweet God, magnificent ass. Oh, 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 my friend, oh, you are tearing me, oh, ah, oh, oh, at least, oh, oh, prepare the way. I'll do nothing of the sort, my God, half the pleasure's lost by these stupid attentions. 
Put yourself in mind of our principles, Eugenie. I labor in my behalf only. Now, victim for a moment, my lovely angel. Soon, you're persecuting your turn. Oh, my holy God! It enters! You, you are putting me to death! A oh, God! Touch bottom! Oh, oh, do what you will! Tis arrived! I feel nothing but pleasure! Oh, oh. oh I love to fling this huge prick on a virgin's clitoris! You, Chevalier, show me a good ass! Oh, do I fling you well, Libertine? And you, Madame, do fuck me. Fuck your slut. Yes, I am she and wish to be. Oh, Eugenie, discharge. My angel, yes, discharge. Oh, despite himself, August infuse me with his fuck. I receive the Chevaliers. Mine goes to join him. Ah, I resist no longer. Ah, no more. Ah, Eugenie, wiggle your buttocks and grip my prick. I'm going to jet a blazing fox stream deep into your entrails. Ah, fucking bugger of a god. I die. Ah. Behold, behold, madame, here's your little libertine fool of fuck again. The entrance to her cunt is soaked with it. Frig her, vigorously smite her clitoris all wet with sperm. Tis one of the most delicious things that may be done. Blessed one, what pleasure you give me! <laughs> oh, dear love, I burn with lubricity! <laughs> Chevalier, as tis you who will deflower this lovely child, add your ministrations to those of your sister, that she may swoon in your arms and strike the sodomite's attitude. I am going to embugger you while Augustine does the same to me. <coughs> Is my position satisfactory? Your ass ever so gently raised up. Up with it! A fraction of an inch, my love. There! Just so! Without lubrication, Chevalier? Where? Bless my soul! As you damn well please! Can I feel anything but pleasure in this delicious girl's womb? Mwah! 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 As for myself, my dear, I be assured of it. I take far more pleasure with you than with Eugenie. There is an immense difference between a boy's and a girl's ass. So bugger me, Augustine. I what a bloody effort is required to get you to move! Oh, oh, but damn, sir, it's because it's been, it's been a, it's just been running and dripping a moment ago into this pretty little turd dog here, and now you're wanting it to get right up for your bum there, which really ain't so pretty. Idiot! But why complain? Tis Mother Nature. Well, Go on, trusty Augustine. Go on with your indiscriminate penetrating. And when one day you have a little more experience, 
You will tell me whether one ass isn't worth thirty cunts. Eugenie, deal fairly with the Chevalier. You are thoughtless of everything but yourself. Well, Libertine, you are right, but in your own pleasure's interest, frig him, since he is to gather your first fruits. But I am frigging him! Oh, 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 I do kiss him! I, I am going out of my head! Now, as for myself, I have elected prudence and restraint. I wish merely to have this fine ass put me in form. The fuck that's being fired in me I am saving for Madame de saint Ange. It is wonderfully amusing to commence in one ass the operation one wishes to conclude in another. I say, Chevalier, you seem nicely got up. Shall we to the deflowering? Oh, heavens! No, no, not by him, not by him. I'd perish from it. Yours is smaller, de Monsey. May it be to you, whom I owe thanks for the operation. I beg of you. Tis out of the question, my angel. I've never fucked a cunt in my life, and one cannot begin at my age. <laughs> Your hymen belongs to the Chevalier. Of us all here, he alone is worthy of its capture. Do you not rob him of his just prize? Refuse a maidenhead! As fresh, as pretty, as this! For I defy anyone to say my Eugenie is not the loveliest girl in France! Oh, monsieur! Monsieur! Indeed, that's what I call holding too closely to one's principles. You say I am too scrupulous, madame. Tis unkind. For there are multitudes of my colleagues, stricter in their worship than I, who most assuredly would not bugger you. Aye. I've done it, and would do it again. It is not thus, as you suspect, a question of carrying my worship to the point of fanaticism. Well, then, Chevalier, the task is yours. Proceed, but have a little care what you do. Consider the narrowness of the channel you are going to navigate. What of the proportion between the contents and the container? Oh, oh, twill kill me, twill kill me, I'm sure of it. Oh, tis inevitable. Oh, oh, oh. But my furious desire to be fucked makes me chance it fearlessly. Go on, penetrate, my dear. I abandon myself to you. <coughs> Oh, uh, fuck! Yes, a little go in! Sister! Dumoncet! Each of you take one of her legs! Ah, oh, the good what an enterprise! Ah, oh, yes, yes, she must be split like a melon halved! Good and good again! Yes, it's got to enter! Gently, gently, the pain is great. Ah! Help me! Ah, help me, my good friends! Ah, 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 ah. No, 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 I don't want him to do it! I don't want him! I cry for helping him persist! Ah. Cry away as much as you please, little chit! I tell you, it must go in, even were it to shiver you into small pieces. Oh, what barbarity! Oh. Fuck! As 
one expected to be a gentleman when one is stiff? Ha! Ah, look! It's sunk! It's in! Back good! Folk! There's the maiden head blasted to the devil! Look how he bleeds! Go on, Tiger! Go on, Tiger! Tear me to ribbons if you wish! I don't care a damn! Kiss me, butcher! I adore you! Oh, it is nothing when it's inside! Oh, the pains are forgotten! Well, one to girls who shy away from such an attack! Oh, 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 what tremendous pleasures they deny themselves at the cost of a little trouble! Thrust! Thrust! Push! Push! Chevalier! Oh, Chevalier! I am coming! Spray your fuck over the wounds and lacerations! Drive it to the bottom of my womb! Oh, suffering gives way to pleasure! I am ready to swoon! It would be my opinion that while the avenue is open, the little bitch might be instantly fucked by Augustine. By, by Augustine? A prick? Of those dimensions? Uh, oh, immediately! Why, well, I'm still bleeding! Do you, then, would you, do you then wish to kill me? Oh, dear heart, kiss me! I sympathize with you! But sentence has been pronounced! There is no appeal, my dearest! You have got to submit to it! Oh, zounds! <clears throat> I am... Already, soon's it's me sticking this bonny girl, and I come, by God, all the way from Rome, on foot. Chevalier grasps Augustine's mammoth device. Oh, look at it, isn't it? Look how it is wrecked. How worthy it is to replace me. Oh, merciful heaven, what a peace. Oh, tis clear you day design my death. Oh, no, Monsieur. God's never killed anybody. One instant, my fine boy. One instant. She must present her ass to me while you fuck her. Yes, that's it. Come hither, madame. I promise to sodomize you. I'll keep my word. But situate yourself in such a way that as I fuck you, I can be within reach of Eugenie's fucker. And let the Chevalier flog me in the meantime. Ah, 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 fuck! Ah, 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 he cracked me! Ah, ah, oh, oh, go gently! Go gently! Great tout! Oh, 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 there's the bugger! There he digs in! Oh, there, there it is the fucking shot! He's at the very bottom! Oh, 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 I'm dying! Oh, I'm dying! Oh, the monster! How you strike! A test to ignite me before and behind! Oh, 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 you're sitting in my buttocks of fire! Ah! Oh, you'll be a fire! So burn, little bitch! Ah! Oh, and you'll discharge them all deliciously! How you figure! Sardons, let your deft fingers soothe the hurt that Augustine and I cause her. Oh, but your anus contracts. I see it, madame. I see it. We're going to come together. Oh, tis I know not how divine thus to be, twixt sister and brother. Fuck, my star. Fuck. Never do I believe I have had so much pleasure. <clears throat> De monsieur, let's change hands. Benimbul, pass from my sister's ass to Eugenie's, so as to acquaint her with the intermediary's pleasures. 
And they will embargo my sister, who, meanwhile, will shower you upon your ass the very whip strokes wherewith you've just brought Eugenie's behind to blood. Mmm, yes, agreed. There, my friend, has ever seen a shift more cunningly effected. What? Both of them? On top of me? Good heavens! What will come next? I've really had enough of this oaf. Oh, how much this double, how much fuck this double pleasure is going to cost me? It, oh, it, it flows, ah, ah, it flows on the hitty, oh, with an essential ejaculation. Oh, I believe I would already be dead. Oh, why, my dearest, my dearest, you imitate me. Oh, oh, hear the bitch swear. Oh, discharge. Discharge, Tomase! Oh, discharge, my love! Oh, this fat person inundates me! He shoots to the depth of my entrails! Oh, oh, my good fuckers! What is this? Two at a time! Good Christ! Receive my fuck! Dear companions, it conjoins itself with your own! I am annihilated! <laughs> Ah, uh, well, my dear, what think you of your scholar? Am I enough of a whore now? But what a state you do put me in! What an agitation! Oh, yes, I swear, in my drunkenness, I swear I would have gone off I would have gone, if necessary, and got myself fucked in the middle of the street. How beautiful she is thus. You! You! I detest you! You refuse me! Ah, could I contradict my dogmas? Very well. Oh, very well. I forgive you. I forgive you. And I must respect the principles which lead us to wild conduct. How can I not acknowledge and adopt them? I, who wish not to live save in crime. Let's sit down and chat a little. I'm exhausted. Continue my instruction, Domance, and say something that will console me for the excesses to which I have given myself over. Stifle my remorse. Encourage me. Tis fair enough. As we say... A little theory must succeed practice. It is the means to make a perfect disciple. Well, then, upon what subject, Eugenie, would you like to have a discussion? I should like to know whether manners are truly necessary in a governed society, whether their influence has any weight with a national genius. Hmm. Why, by God, I have something here with me. As I left home this morning, I bought, outside the Palace of Equality, a little pamphlet, which, if one can believe the title, ought surely to answer your question. It's come straight from the press. Let me read it! Yet another effort, Frenchmen, if you would become Republicans. Hmm, upon my word, tis an unusual title. Tis promising, Chevalier. You possess a fine organ. Read it to us. Unless I am mistaken, this should perfectly reply to Eugenie's queries. Assuredly. Out with you, Augustine. This is not for you, but don't go too far. We'll ring you when we want you back. <clears throat> well, I'll begin. 